the crust of the penis. Everything extending outward is going to be the body of the penis until you get to the very tip or the end of it, and that is going to be the glands of the penis. So because it is shared between reproductive and um, urinary, the opening is the um, external urethral orifice. External urethral orifice, the prepuce or the foreskin, ask your TA about that, it is going to be a covering of the um, penis, specifically um, seen best in the glands region. Okay, There's two layers within the penis that you can see um, the difference in the internal portion. So you see this top portion that looks like it has caverns, that's the corpora cavernosa or the corpus cavernosa. Then this bottom layer right here with the urethra running through it, that is the corpora spongiosum. Corpora spongiosum. So we start off in the testicle. Okay, Inside of the testicle is the seminiferous tubules. So seminiferous tubules are all coiled up within the testes or the testicle. Then they feed it to this top hat structure known as the epididymis, epididymis, and that feeds it up through the ductus deferens, which run all of these blood vessels, the purple and all the blood vessels, there's a region called the spermatic cord, okay? So the epididymis feeds it to the ductus deferens or the vas deferens, which is going to go back to this stickered structure right here known as the um, seminal vesicles or seminal glands which holds it until it's ready to be ejaculated um, through, you can see the beginning of the ejaculatory duct right there in the prostate gland, but it doesn't go all the way through, so I'm going to show you on this model it looks a little better. Okay, so you see the back of the urinary bladder, and then we have the ejaculatory duct running through the prostate gland right there, connecting into the urethra at the top of the prostate. Okay. Urethra is shared. The both of the urethral glands are only going to be found on these older models. So just below the prostate, just below the prostate, below the prostate right here, you have this little gland, the bul 27 right there, bulbo urethral gland, and that is going to um, secrete some buffer to help the sperm survive the acidic environment pH of the vagina. Okay, guys, in this section, we're going to start off with the reproductive anatomy for the females, okay? So we start off with ovaries, okay? So the ovaries are going to sit right here. So here's the front part of this uterus portion. Let's look at this model right here. You can see an ovary right there, kind of egg-like structure, the ovary. Important for reference, the uterus sits on top of the urinary bladder. So when females get pregnant, the uterus will expand and press down on the urinary bladder, causing pregnant women to have to pee often. Okay, so going back to the ovary. The ovary has this um, little ligament right here that connects it to the uterus. Okay, so the ovary connecting it to the uterus is the uh, ovarian ligament. Uterine tubes. So the uterine tubes, you can see one cut open on this side, are kind of leading from the uterus into the ovary itself. So the ovary will connect to the uterus through the uterine tubes. And the uterine tubes are broken up into three major regions. We're going to break it up right here. It's going to be the isthmus. Then where it starts to curve, that's the ampulla. And the very edge of it is the... Um, in fundibulum, that ends in these finger-like structures known as fimbriae. Fimbriae, okay? And the fimbriae actually are crazy. They float um, the eggs that are um, released from the ovaries back into the uterine tubes. Isn't that crazy? Okay. So if you've ever heard of ectopic pregnancies, it's because... Uh, that egg was released through ovulation and it released out into the middle of nowhere in your abdominal cavity and the fimbriae didn't float them back into the uterine tubes and it was a sperm traveled up 
through the uterine tubes, okay, through the uterine tube, and actually um, fertilized it outside of the uterus. So if it's fertilized outside of the uterus, that's an ectopic pregnancy. It can be very dangerous, okay? Next, we have broad ligaments. So going back to this front side, the broad, broad ligaments are way down here. It's a very broad ligament underneath the ovarian ligament. So we have the ovarian ligament right there, broad ligament below it, this thin little piece right here below the uterine tube and above the ovarian ligament. This is the mesovarian. Mesovarian. Okay. And this thing we've been talking about right here that's cut open now is the uterus. And within the uterus, okay, we have this piece right here down there is the cervix. And this is the vagina or the vaginal canal. Okay. All right. And vulva is a term that we'll cover in a little bit. Vulva stands for all of the external genitalia of a female. Okay, so we have a couple layers within the uterus that you need to know. So the layers surrounding the outside of the uterus, so all this white, is the parametrium, so it's surrounding it. The middle muscular layer, okay, kind of like in the heart, was the myocardium. This is the myometrium, myometrium. And then the innermost layer, okay, where eggs are normally um, embedded into is the endometrium, where it sloughs off every month during the menstrual period, okay? The endometrium. The actual space within it is the uterine cavity within that triangular space, uterine cavity. Cervix is down here with the um, narrowing right here. So the narrowing right here is the internal os, of the cervix, the narrowing right here, opening to the vagina, is the external os of the cervix. And the connection between the two is the cervical canal. So the cervical canal is in between the internal os and the external os of the cervix. Then we'll go to vulva, which will be the external genitalia of a female. Okay, so you can see it right there. Okay. Vestibule is just this opening to the outside world right here. So this opening right here is the vestibule. You see these two folds, okay? So you see these outer larger folds and these um, smaller inner folds right here. This is the labia majora, which is lateral and larger, labia majora. The labia minora are the intermedial folds, labia minora. Labia minora right there. So on this model, I'll show you what it looks like. The labia majora are lateral and larger, and the labia minora are medial and are a little bit smaller. Okay. The clitoris, so while we're on this model, the clitoris is right here, okay, at the more in the anterior portion for the female. And the clitoris can also be seen on this other model at the top right there, okay, clitoris. And you can open it to check, okay? You can check your work, okay? Clitoris should be right there, okay? Clitoris, okay? Next, the mons pubis, okay? The mons pubis is this uh, fatty layer that kind of protects baby. So it's all the skin and fat right there in front. It's the mons pubis layer. And the greater vestibular gland is going to be this pink gland right here. You can see right there. It moistens the surface um, for um, sexual intercourse. Okay, so here is the greater vestibular gland. So we're going to cover the three muscles that make up the um, triangle. We have the bulbospongiosis that hugs right up against the labia majora. Then this outside portion of the triangle is the ischiocavernosis. Then the superficial transverse perineal completes the triangle at the bottom. Okay, so to repeat, superficial transverse perineal, bottom of the triangle, bulbospongiosis right up against the labia majora, and ischiocavernosis on the lateral portion right there. Okay, and that should be it for the reproductive system. Good luck, you guys. <laughs>